Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light with another video that's going to help you succeed in the police recruitment process. This time it's for those of you who are applying for the British Transport Police, although this guidance and advice will help support you if you're applying to any force that has a final interview. Now, the thing about the British Transport Police is it's, it is unique um, unique because it has a completely different recruitment process to all the Home Office forces. It's a unique in so many other ways as well, but in terms of its recruitment process, it doesn't use the Home Office Online Assessment Centre. When I say Home Office, I mean College of Policing, but it's designed for the Home Office forces. Um, I believe the Civil Nuc Nuclear Constabulary are also using it at the moment because they haven't got anything else they can use until they get over the sort of COVID backlog. So British Transport Police have a, a one hour interview stroke assessment where you are asked to do a 10 minute presentation and then following that there are interview questions which also involve you managing a scenario. So let's take a look at the British Transport Police presentation. This is the one that you've got 10 minutes to nail. They might ask you some questions based on what you have to say. Um, so first of all, uh, we've got some uh, questions about why you want to be a police constable, what qualities do you believe a police officer should have, uh, what sort of role or tasks do you believe you'd be carrying out as a police officer, what sort of impact is being a police officer going to have on your personal life, uh, what is the role or function of the British Transport Police? What are the current goals and priorities for the British Transport Police? And the last question, uh, who are the communities that British Transport Police serve? So th the way to think about this isn't so much as a presentation, but more as these are interview questions. I've just got to answer them all at once. And so when we break it down and chunk it down, it seems a lot more manageable as opposed to you thinking you've got to do some fancy presentation. No, you've just got to answer these questions. Now, in some coaching I've just done with a candidate for the British Transport Police, uh, there's all my scribbly notes there, um, there's some things that came out that I, I want to pass on to you as uh, some learning that you really, really do need to take note of. Um, how do you access things like the one-to-one -one coaching or my... Uh, interactive webinars that we do as a group, well, check the links below to the online courses, the online courses plus webinars, the online courses plus one-to-one -one coaching, and the different Facebook groups you can join. Uh, some of the resources are free. Some of them, of course, are paid for because I give you like 26 years worth of coaching experience within the police, 36 years worth of experience in the police sector. Over 12,000 people are now in the police as a result of my support and the majority of them passed first time. How? Well, because we need to approach exercises like this one in a systematic way to have a structured approach. And the one thing that was missing from my client today was a structured approach. Um, they got very jumbled in the answers they provided. Um, it was a bit too wordy, uh, repetitive at times. So we've got to avoid all of that. Now, if we just look at the very first question, why do you want to be a police constable? I'll talk about why do I want to be a police constable in British Transport Police? Um, one of the things we've got to do here is to tell a story, not just a load of cliches about why you want to help people, um, help support communities, put something back. I've always wanted to be a police officer in British Transport Police. You know, all of those cliches aren't gonna tell them anything at all about you. So one of the things that we, we did today is we, we actually constructed this really emotive story because the first time my client um, gave me his account about why he wanted to be a police officer, quite honestly, there was no emotion in it. It was too wordy, it was repetitive. There was no emotion in it at all. He could have been telling me how he's just gone to the shops to buy a pint of milk. It was that exciting. Remember, this is the first time you're going to have the opportunity to make an impact on them. I expect some enthusiasm. I expect some passion. And so one of the things that I want to focus on, uh, wanted to focus on with my client is making sure that there's a story that's told that is compelling, that starts off 
with a really interesting hook. Um, and in this case, he talked about his previous uh, role, one of his previous roles and how it gave him pride and satisfaction until he actually met a police officer and then he realised what true pride and satisfaction was. And then we moved on from that and linked that to the next thing and then linked that to the next thing and linked that to the next thing, all the way to the point where this individual actually works in the police sector as a civilian member of staff, um, all the way to the point where he was actually told by a senior officer that you're police officer material. And that further inspired him to actually take the jump to apply for British Transport Police. Now, there's also some realism in there as well, um, because why didn't he apply for the police force that he's actually working for? Well, look, you know, one of the things they expect at the interview is for you to be authentic and to tell them the real reasons why. And he didn't want to share the real reasons why. I'll share them with you because you're not going to be able to identify the individual. And I do have them. I do have permission from this individual to make this video as well, based on our coaching call. Um, and uh, there were several reasons, but one of them was how he's seen so many officers struggling with the PCDA and struggling to do a degree, as well as learning how to be a police officer, as well as all the shift work, and trying to cram all of the university work into their rest days. And quite frankly, he said, you know, so many of them have left and I don't want to be one of those individuals. And so I took a look at alternative pathways and that's when British Transport Police came up as an option. Now, he wasn't sure whether he should said to say that, but it's the truth. <laughs> and remember, you're being interviewed by people like me and I can work out whether you're trying to BS me with cliches and the things that you think I want to hear. I don't want to hear the things that you think I want to hear. I want to hear about what's in your heart. I want to hear about what's motivating you. I want to hear about what's driving each stage of your journey as to why you want to be a police officer. So telling a story, um, that's really, really important. Um, okay, other points uh, that I can help you with. Yeah, when it comes to things like the, what the role involves and uh, what qualities um, should a police officer have, um, it came out as just a load of bullet points. It came out as like a shopping list of uh, this, 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 and this. And I was, frankly, I was bored. Um, it wasn't really connecting with me. So again, we need to go back to telling a story. Now, in the second video that comes after this one, I'm going to talk to you about how to construct a story for things like the qualities that a police officer should have, sort of roles and tasks that uh, police officers in British Transport Police face, and the impact of being a police officer on your personal life. Uh, all of these things here as well, role of British Transport Police, current goals and priorities, communities that British Transport Police uh, serve, I'm also going to talk to you about how you can deliver a really compelling story that supports those questions. One that's going to completely nail it and one I know from my connections in British Transport Police does give you extra marks. They're looking for you to do this one thing that I'm going to talk about in the next video and this one thing actually has a tick in the box on the marking guide. That you get extra marks for it. So I'm going to talk to you about that in the second video. Where are you going to find that second video? Well, if you're one of my clients, it's going to be in the interview course Facebook group. I'm also going to add it to the interview course. Now, in the interview course, I provide you with all the guidance you need to ace the British Transport Police process, um, as well as every other force in the country. There's so much guidance in there, so much to support you. And you've got the opportunity to practice once a week with me during the practice webinars and you get the opportunity to access a year's worth of recordings of practice webinars. My goodness, you can geek out here um, on Blue Light TV, everything you need to prepare you for the interview or your assessment, whatever it might be. Here's the deal though, you've got to do the hard work. I'll show you the way you've got to do the hard work. So I look forward to seeing you on Wabano's, one of those webinars very, very soon, or on one of my one-to-one -one coaching sessions. I'll catch you with you soon, my friends. Bye-bye for now.